it's been kind of a quiet month and a half. So what has the last month and a half been like here in the offices? Yeah, not quite for our team, that's for sure. Um, you know, with a lot of on a rebuild last year, which we knew we were going to have to do for, you know, basically year one of what we're trying to accomplish in kind of this new culture and our guys from last year, they did a really good job coming in on the fly um, and establishing that. With that said, we had well over 60 some trades and, you know, acquisitions going in and out. So left us with eight futures trades. So for us, for the last few weeks, um, we couldn't get the list until um, about 10 days ago got those lists on players that are exposed um, that we can choose from. And then just a lot of video, a lot of phone calls, a lot of time um, research to, to see what we wanted to build our team around. So in those 10 days, what are you looking for to acquire these new players? Well, I mean, I think it, it's multiple facet questions. It's a really good question. Number one, we have to find, we wanted to go into this getting a blend of guys um, across the board from some depth, some toughness, some splash, some scoring, some center position. Like we didn't want to load up on one area. So we went and got three defensemen, five forwards, four righties, four lefties, um, guys that are dying to get into the American League, guys that are happy and trying to build off last year, guys that might go to Europe. We have, we have a blend across the board. Um, we did that on purpose. Challenging in darkest moments, applying pressure and then making the team better. You told me that explicitly probably day one since you got here. What are some of the key attributes in a player that can make that mantra into a consistent winning mentality here? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing with the attributes is, is guys really have to be dialed in of what they want. They want to be playing. They got to still have passion and love for the game. It doesn't matter if you're 10, if you're in the NHL, if you don't have passion, you, you're not focused on your craft. You're not going to grow as a player. We want growth within our system. Um, we're going to feel like a young team in a very old school tradition vibe, right? But our players, for the most part, are younger. Obviously, we had Matthew on, Ian White, um, some elder statesman type guys that have been around. But, but we got a nucleus of young guys and nucleus of younger guys that are coming in as well. So we want growth. That's number one. Um, another attribute we want to do, uh, or excuse me, we want them to do their job to the best of their ability. I don't want to feel like players over the course of two or three years are doing five or six or seven different jobs. It, uh, this is a puzzle. It's a, it's a tough puzzle because this league, there's so many call-ups and injuries and, you know, it's sometimes you play second line and then fourth line and you have to switch positions. You saw that um, multiple times last year, but we want to really hone in on getting to guys' expertise and using them and maximizing their game. The futures deadline is about an hour away, but you have completed all of your future considerations deadline. So what are some of the players that you're most excited to get out of this deal? Just go through the list of guys that you've acquired. I mean, I'll just tell you, we're excited about every single guy and for different reasons. I mean, we start with a guy that we, we probably won't see in Charlie Curdy. He's, you know, we knew he was going to go to Europe but there's a glimmer of 5% hope that he is going to get an American League deal or a call-up. Um, he's a huge linchpin on the back end, a steady guy who's a plus 20 for, for Toledo. So we go down the list to a splash player that's wide and thick, kind of a buzzsaw player in Troy Lajeunesse. Um, heard from a couple of our players that have played against him in Major Junior. He's a guy that wants to win. He wore a letter at PEI. I think there's a lot of unknowns with him. He could be a Jonathan Marsa show, Brad Marchant, young feel to him, but with some thickness to his body and, and also can have a scoring touch and plays down the middle. So um, those are kind of two splashes. If we see them, great. If we don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, you go in to kind of flip it to um, over in Allen. We had two picks from them. We got Justin Young, who uh, he had a tough hand injury, so came off of three months of not feeling a ton of confidence, had 31 points at AIC the year before, so he's done it before, um, played in the AJ. So this is a guy that's more of a meat and potatoes guy, but I think can still score his confidence, just build that up. Um, I think he'd still chuck the mitts. He'd fit in with kind of the likes of like that Caddick feel where he's, he's going to work extremely hard and, and earn what he gets. Um, go into uh, Jock of Novak, another splash player that came in at seven goals at a hat trick at the end of the year, came in from college from Northeastern, wore a letter there. Um, he's a very fluid skater. He reminds me how Murr, um, Burgess kind of get up and down the ice. Sometimes it doesn't look like they're working their hardest, but they make things happen because of their skill. 
Um, I think that might just be something for him that he still has that edge and maybe he needs more games. So he's probably going to be looking for an American League deal as well. Is Europe in the cards? Maybe, maybe not. Um, we feel like if we get him, he can play center on his off wing. Uh, that would be a huge, uh, huge upgrade for us at the forward depth position. So Andrew McLean, we got, um, he played briefly in Orlando and the year before the whole year, had him in Knoxville in the COVID year, which was an accelerated ECHL in Knoxville. He went to um, Europe had a, a really good year over in Glasgow. We got his rights. I talked to him on the phone. He's excited to come in. He'll solidify our top four. Uh, defensive core can play on the left or right side, and um, he's good. We'll move on to out west. Uh, we had the rights in that Soper trade with Keegan Iverson. You know, uh, New York Ranger draft pick, captain at Portland Winter Hawks, um, played some big time hockey, got in American League games. He's, he's a rough, tough type of guy, uh, wrecking ball right side. Um, I think Keegan can do a lot of good things in this city and with this fan base and our team. And then you go in just down the road, down to Utah, got Keaton Jamison, who played second line center for them, killed penalties, played first power play net front. Um, you know, Keaton's just, he's a second year guy. So he wants to build off of 37 points last year, could be a 45, 50 point guy. So you can tell the blend that we got and all these types of players. One player you did add was Josh Thrower. He's a player that you know very well. Admirals fans certainly know a lot about this guy because of how physical he's been against us over the last few years. The addition of Josh Thrower probably is going to please a lot of fans. It is. And, and we knew going into this with Josh that we, we might not get him. When you play four, five, six years in as heavy as he's played in this league, it, you get in your mid-late 20s, it can look like you maybe want to go to Europe. We're happy for him, whatever he chooses. Obviously, we're recruiting him hard. Um, I got off the phone with him a couple days ago. He, he reminded me of you know the tough goings that Norfolk had a little bit, but he believes in, in our staff and what we're doing, and he saw a plenty change from us last year. So if, if he chooses North America, he's going to obviously report and show up and do everything we need him to do, whether it's at Ford or D, and play that tough role. So what are the next steps? Because in a couple of days, the league officially approves signing players for the upcoming season. So what is the in-depth next steps over the next month? Yeah, great question. First protected list came out. You can balloon some teams, 22 to 25, 30 guys. Um, I think we're right around 24, 25. That doesn't count veterans, doesn't count American League NHL contracts. Of that list, we add in these futures. Our list is gonna be in the upper 20s. And then we have to decide on 20 players' rights that we can protect, that we can hold on to, that we have. So we're gonna go through that list of all the futures, our past team protected list, and we're gonna get that list down to 20 guys. Um, and July is qualifying offers, July 7th. Some of the guys that we're not sure on, but we wanna hold rights to, we'll, we'll qualify and go from there. So it's just, it'll be a, a kind of a domino and Plinko effect of, who do we think is going to come here and report? Who do we really want to hold on to rights? We'll do that. That'll be next step. And that'll be Thursday here in, in two days.